Hi guys, welcome back to another furniture refinishing episode. My name is Walesa from Alight Refurbish. If you've been loving the bare wood natural makeovers, stick around for today's furniture flip. We have a stunning dresser that used to have a mirror on the top that was held by two side posts. It has some dings that are pretty deep, some holes on the top where the post that held the mirror used to be, they need to be repaired, along with some minor veneer damage on the side. The vision for this piece is to lighten that brown but still have wood grain visible to the eye. So I'm gonna be sanding the current finish. Uh, but remember that before I start anything else, I'm gonna start by cleaning my piece. And today here I'm showing you why I use a very powerful degreaser. Ready? This is why we clean before sanding. That's why. You don't want to push any of that into the wood grain, guys. This is it. Perhaps I sound like a broken record to you, but I see so many people out there painting furniture and the first thing that they do is go straight to sanding. And what happens is that the abrasive in your sanding sheet opens your wood grain. At the same time, it pushes whatever sees in the surface inside the wood grain so unless they are removed they go in what happens when you apply paint or stain or in today's case a color wash it's almost like you're filling the wood grain that's dirty with paint and all that grime is gonna come up with your paint and it looks brown it looks pink it makes your finish uneven so i'm trying to help you avoid some frustration by teaching you the super important step of using a powerful degreaser before sanding. Since any good degreaser leaves some residue, make sure that you rinse that afterwards with just plain water. For this project, I'm using a new to me sander, which is the five inch orbital surf prep system here. And let me just tell you that as soon as I started using it, I was a little bit intimidated by the power of the sander. I hardly put any pressure on my Dewalt, but this one was almost like I have to be super gentle with it because I felt like I was going to sand through the veneer. The awesome thing about it, of course, for me, is that it saves me tons of time because it sands really, really fast and effectively. I had to take a break and tell you guys that I had to switch the abrasive. It's my first time trying this compared to my Dewalt Orbital one. My gosh, the power in this thing, it's crazy. The sanding paper that I just put in resembles to my normal orbital sander one. It was a little bit more gentle and I just think that until I get the full hang of the sander, better to play it safe, especially since my new finish is gonna expose the bare wood. The main difference that I can see between the rectangular sander and the round one is that the rectangular is definitely more gentle. And obviously for any square edge that you want to sand, it really gets into those corners. But for the non-detail areas, flat surfaces, I do find that sanding with the round orbital wand is faster. The runners on this dresser are really worn out, preventing the drawer from sliding smoothly. I just want to make that flush using Bando. I'll talk more about Bando later on. While Bando dries, I'm scrubbing the casters on this dresser. They have previously been soaking a mixture of water and vinegar, and right now I'm just using still wool and Bar's Keeper's Friend. About an hour later, I went back and sanded Bando until it was smooth. And I tried and tested the drawers and it definitely helped out. The inside of this dresser also needed a good sanding, so I just took my time with each drawer to remove that finish that was spilling off. Once 
One of the drawers had some paper really stuck to it. I removed as much as I could by hand with a spatula. For some of the residue that was really hard to get out, I used some goo gun and went back with a spatula. Pull out my scraper to remove some of these really stubborn finish that was so stuck to one of the drawer edges. For the last few repairs, I'm using quick wood. All you gotta do is to knead this putty with your fingers until it's a uniform color. And finally, press the putty firmly to the surface to be repaired. After an hour or so, I came back out to sand it until smooth. To make sure that my piece is super clean before treating it with a color wash, I'm using green MB Mineral Spirits. Just make sure that the mineral spirits has completely dry before you treat the wood in any way. I normally like to wait overnight before applying my paint or stain. It's time to do our color wash and I'm using the color Algonquin from Fusion Mineral Paint and my Zebra brush. I'm going to mix one part paint to four parts water, mix it, and then this is going to give me a happy medium color. I don't want my piece too light or too dark and this color is really neutral is really beautiful you can still appreciate all the wood underneath after you're done with this technique i normally apply two or three coats of it on this piece i ended up applying two coats the way the technique is applied you have to have a couple wet rags ready to go you brush in your color wash wait two minutes and then wipe it off with your wet rag Always follow the wood grain when you're wiping and if you can help it, avoid any paint drips. I actually had a few here, <laughs> you're going to see them. I think I was saturating my brush a little too much and I kept getting them. So what you do if you get them is go over them right away. What you don't want is for them to settle down because they will stick out like a sore thumb. You can always use your wet rag and wipe them off right away and then just start your process of applying your paint again on that area. But right now you're going to see that I kind of go over. Um, instead of going across from left to right, I end up addressing those strips right here because I just don't, I don't want them to settle down on the wood. When applying this technique, I also like to work on sections. For example, I did the top first, wipe down, then I'm doing the drawers here. I'm gonna wait a couple minutes, wipe them down, and move to the sides. After applying a color wash technique, it's very common for the wood grain to raise, which means your surface is not very smooth. I'm addressing that by scab sanding with this 220 grit super sponge from Gator. To get rid of the sanding dust, I'm using this stock cloth and we can finally top coat our piece to protect it. As always, I'm using my favorite high performance flat from General Finishes and I'm spraying it with my home right sprayer. I'll be applying a total of three coats.
Are you guys ready to see the final results? I am. But first, let's take a look at how these dress are used to look. And here is how it looks now. Let me know what you guys think of this makeover in the comments. And if you enjoyed today's content, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for your continued support. You guys are amazing for showing up every week. I appreciate you so much. I appreciate your comments and your love. But if you haven't subscribed, this is your reminder to subscribe and turn on those notifications so that next week when I post another makeover, you'll be the first one to know. Don't forget that just like there's hope for these pieces of furniture, it doesn't matter how tough things get, there's always hope for you. I will see you guys next week.